10th D class, which as you may know is a highly developed English class. And uh, I am making this presentation because my English teacher asked me to. And uh, I chose the topic health because I would like to become a doctor in the future. So as you can see there, I have a table of contents. So you can see where we are right now at the presentation. Okay, so my first uh, bigger topic is healthcare systems. Mainly, I wanted to talk about the American and the Hungarian one because I think those two contrast well and they are a bit more interesting. So firstly, the American one is uh, provided by many distinct organizations made up of insurance companies, healthcare providers, hospital systems, and independent providers. Healthcare um, facilities are largely owned and operated by private sector businesses. Therefore, uh, the whole healthcare system is based on money. So, for example, if somebody cannot afford an operation or uh, anything that a healthcare uh, system would provide them, they do not get that uh, treatment. However, in Hungary, it is a tax-funded tax universal healthcare system, which is organized by the state owned by national health insurance fund, as you can see here. And uh, the most interesting thing in this, I think, is that uh, Hungarians cannot get treated in other countries because they don't pay taxes there. However, when you have a receipt that you had to be operated while you were on vacation or uh, in another country, then uh, your uh, insurance company will uh, provide you that money that you had to pay there. Uh, however, it is a lot of paperwork and everything, so is a lot harder and more complicated when you are Hungarian to be treated in another country where you are not um, living there. So um, you can see here that the American healthcare system is one of the most expensive ones in the whole entire world. Um, here are other countries where the healthcare system is also similar to the American ones, but they are a lot cheaper, even like half of it in Germany and Sweden. They are on the second and third place. Um, and many people who live in these countries um, do not like this type of uh, organization because really uh, healthcare should be free for everyone. And uh, yes, this is all. Um, so I think to healthcare systems, health tourism connects uh, very strictly. Because for example, if somebody uh, cannot get the treatment they need for their uh, illness, uh, then they have to travel to other countries. The motivation can be uh, medical services that are un unavailable in their country or that uh, the professionals are not as highly qualified in their country as in other ones. For example, when you go to Turkey to have plastic surgery, there is also health tourism. But when, uh, for example, your doctors here in Hungary cannot cure your diseases and you travel to Germany, where the healthcare is a lot more uh, developed, then there is also health tourism. Um, I think we have to talk about health equality and health equity um, when it comes to healthcare. Equality in healthcare systems means that everyone has the same opportunities. Examples could include the community center offering free or low cost health checkups to everyone. Um, however, health equity uh, means that people have opportunities based on their needs. An example could be the same health center charging people based on their ability to pay. This is very common in America. Um, healthcare in schools, I think not many people think that, uh, for example, PE lessons are also a part of education, uh, of healthcare in schools. Um, other examples can be health services, uh, health promotion for staff, for example, here teachers. And uh, these are uh, here for the reason that some children or even teachers cannot afford uh, healthcare uh, at uh, home and therefore the school has to provide these type of uh, things like uh, physical education or uh, mental health providing. My next bigger section is mental health. I think when it comes to health, your mental stability is just as important as uh, your physical one. Um, two very common mental illnesses are depression and anxiety. Uh, depression, on one hand, or major depressive disorder, is a common and serious medical illness that negatively affects 
how you feel and um, how you think or you act. For example, um, you liked doing something in the past, but it doesn't spark you joy anymore. And uh, it really causes you a feeling of sadness and a loss of interest in activities that you enjoyed in the past. Um, also, when somebody is depressed, it doesn't just mean that they are sad. It really affects their whole mood. And also, it can cause uh, physical problems, just as, as mental ones. Anxiety is uh, the body's natural response to stress. Everybody can be anxious, but uh, people who actually have anxiety um, process stress in a very different level. It is a feeling of fear um, and not knowing what is going to come in the future. The first day of school, for example, or a job interview or giving a speech may cause people to be fearful and to have anxiety. Depression can be cured, anxiety can only be treated. Um, these illnesses at a young age are very common, um, mainly in our generation. Um, many factors increase the risk of developing or triggering teen depression, including having issues that impact negatively the self-esteem, for example, obesity, peer problems, or long-term bullying and academic problems. Therefore, it is very important uh, that the school provides mental health uh, stability for the children. And also, having been the victim or witness of violence, such, such as physical or sexual abuse, also are one of the main reasons why children develop anxiety or depression. Um, when it comes to health, there are a lot of controversial topics. For example, genetic engineering. Um, when I first heard about it, I didn't really know what this meant. Um, but traditionally, humans have uh, manipulated gnomes directly by controlling breeding and selecting offsprings with desired traits. So um, genetic engineering happens naturally as well. But I think when we talk about it, the first thing that comes into people's mind is uh, when uh, scientists are modifying genes in a lab in order to create superhumans or uh, people with better abilities than the others. It is mainly used uh, for uh, introducing new and favorable characteristics into the organisms, such as uh, tolerance to chemical uh, herbicide or resistance to incest attacks, which can be very useful. People also manipulate foods, not only people or living creatures. And uh, it is a really important question whether or not it is good or bad. Um, all we know is that there have not been any uh, bad effects on society because of GMOs. So there is actually no health benefits of eating them over non-GMO foods. Abortion is also a very controversial topic and I really wouldn't like to like, add my own opinion. This is strictly for educational purposes. Um, the first question might be, what is it? It is um, the termination of pregnancy by removal or explosion of an embryo or fetus. Um, it is approximately occurs to 30 to 40 percent of pregnancies. Also, national laws control abortion. However, according to United Nations report with data gathered up to 2019, abortion is allowed in uh, 98 percent of countries in order to save women's lives. Euthanasia is uh, coming from a Greek word, uh, which translates to good death. And it is a practice of internationally ending a life to relieve pain and suffering. Different countries have different euthanasia laws. Um, you can see here that as of March 2021, active human euthanasia is legal in uh, these countries here, so not many. And this also leads back to health tourism. So for example, if somebody wants to get euthanasia, then they can travel to these different countries, but it is also very complicated. Cloning, I think all of us have heard of Dolly, the cloned sheep. I think I put, yes, a picture of uh, her. And uh, cloning is the process of producing individuals or identical or virtually identical DNA, either naturally or artificially. In nature, many organisms produce clones through asexual reproduction. 
Um, humans, as far as we know, cannot be cloned. In uh, 1998, scientists in South Korea claimed that they have cloned a uh, human, but it was just a cluster of cells, like four or five, I don't know. Um, so cloning humans have not happened yet. And uh, cloning is done in a way that the, the scientists transfer DNA from an animal um, cells into an egg cell that has had its nucleons and DNA removed, and then the egg develops into an embryo that contains the same genes as the cell donor. So this is how it is done. Um, and also another controversial topic is untested or alternative medicine. Um, there are risks um, of alternative medicine, for example, side effects, like um, I think many of us have heard of um, like alternative medicine as in tea or essential oils, and some people really believe in these. However, they can be pretty dangerous. For example, um, a herb fever few. I don't know what plan that is, but apparently a woman um, ate that and uh, she was pregnant at that time and uh, miscarriage happened. So I think when somebody is um, getting themselves into alternative medicine, they really have to um, look after it. And uh, if it is tested or uh, approved by people who actually studied alternative medicine, then it's their choice whether or not they would like to take it or not. Um, alternative medicine has also pros and cons. I just listed a couple of pros here because I mainly talked about the cons um, beforehand. So it is a whole body care. Alternative medicine is focused on not just your body, but also your mind. Um, it can also be like a personal attention, self-care thing. For example, drinking herbs and medical teas um, that can also affect your mood. Um, it's natural and healthy and also less expensive as other um, medicines. This is all. Um, I have my sources here, so if you are interested, you can look into that. And thank you for your attention.